All right, all right, all right. We're in a new section, merge intervals, uh, here's the introduction. Uh, so it deals with patterns involving overlapping intervals. Uh, the most common problems solved with this pattern are scheduling problems. Six different ways in which two intervals can relate to each other. So you have scheduling problems and at, given any two intervals, they are, can only relate to each other in six different ways and these are them. Either they don't overlap at all and the first one ends before the second one starts. They overlap in this way. Uh, the end of the first one overlaps with the first part of the second one. One is entirely inside the other. The reverse where the second one ends some, sometime in the middle of the first. Another like, what would I call this? A union? Is a union or the set or superset in a, in a sense and this other scenario with two intervals here's an example we have one and five we have all these intervals so these are where they overlap you can pause and look through this you can pause and look through this as well this is one interval another interval another interval and they have quite a bit of overlap um real world problems so display a busy schedule, schedule a new meeting, task scheduling and operating systems. Uh, super useful. Uh, so just like pattern matching some types of problems that relate to it. Mm, fourth largest element in an array, some other pattern. Schedule three interviews for an interview in a day. Use this pattern. Find the intersection of two intervals. Use this pattern. Find the third closest point to the origin use this pattern. So yeah, that's it. What else is there? Now this is one thing that drew me to educate. If they were the first people I noticed who break problems, these algorithm problems into patterns. Merge interval, interval pattern, fast and slow, sliding window, two pointer. Uh, so all the next problem, the problem for the next what week, I believe, uh, five, one, two, three, four, five. For the next five videos will be on the merge interval pattern and i'll try and keep them as short as i possibly can uh, so let's move on to the next problem here are some some example problems and their solution so how do you um, you have an array of closed intervals um, and if this is the definition of a closed interval very super complex let's hide that you need to see that <laughs> where the interval as a start and end time. The input array is sorted respect, with respect to the start and end times. Okay. With respect to the start times, actually, of each of these, they're sorted in terms of one, three, seven. That is sorted that way. We merge overlapping intervals and return a new output array consisting of only non overlapping intervals. Um, so for this example, one, five, all of this. When you merge it, you get this result, and it does make sense because every single thing is overlapping in some way. Uh, same with this. You get 10 and 15 because 12 is a region of overlap. And this, you get these three, which are a bit hard to see, but if you pause the video in step three, you'll see how it actually does make sense. Um, because these two merged to one, so they start and end times are together. This is on its own. Uh, and this, because 18 and 18 are here, they form this. Alrighty, let's see if we've understood the problem. So given the below intervals, find the correct output after merging the overlapping intervals. We have one and six, two and four. This fits entirely within this, so this has to be the answer. Yeah? This is just this, so it's just that, actually. Uh, this is a bit more complex. Three and five completely in here same with four and eight it's just this Ooh, fancy three and five kind of overlap here so two and five same with this so we still have two and five so we have two and five for sure and we have six ten and we have twelve fourteen so we fully understand the problem i'm not gonna take time to do this segment because uh Again, my goal when I do this is to expose my mind to as many different solutions to different patterns as possible so that in an interview scenario, I can remember. So, but we can walk through it. 
insert the first interval from the input list into the output list loop start a loop iterate through each interval of the input list except the first if the in input interval is overlapping with the last interval in the output list uh, merge these two intervals and replace the last interval of the output list with this merged interval otherwise if the input interval does not overlap yada yada yay lots of text uh, that is not particularly useful let's see the solution so there's a naive approach um, probably not worth knowing um, always prefer pictures to words so they're walking us through the uh, the six different ways intervals kind of overlap once again uh, because that's important to solving the problem but they have this wall of text over here but i i'd rather just look at this picture that describes everything they're saying so we have an, the input array and then we create this output array we add always add the first input uh, to the output output list always uh then you check there is some overlap so merge take the last element here and update your output the first element of the output you see this you merge seven is bigger than six so it's just consumed but in this case while six while six was less than seven uh eight is greater than seven so update this to eight here there's no overlap uh here there is some overlap so we update the last value from 12 to 15 here fairly straightforward it seems all right let's walk through this quickly we have this class that it gave us um called an interval and of course typescript is going to cry but the solutions are fairly simple um you know any selection here 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 boolean and no more no more tier it's all green uh, and then this interval class has a start and whether it's closed or not it's always closed in our case uh, and then we come over here where there's more weeping more gnashing of teeth because this is long type interval array Oops. supposed to be of type interval array um, yep. interval array we have intervals and there's no more weeping there's no more gnashing of teeth and that's how you type scriptify something so simple next we're going to walk through the code step by step but we will do what we always do which is we add breakpoints and branches. What's going on? Huh? Start. Okay. Let the games begin. I'm gonna have to watch a few. All right, set up all the variables that we're going to watch. So, get this. So, it's a bit snug, but. So we are looking at the solution. This is everything that with the solution. They're just from line three, twenty five, fairly simple. If there is no length, then we just send like an empty array. Just break out of the loop. Easy. Initialize the result array. So, and it's gonna be an array of intervals. And the interval class, I think we've already shown. It comes from here 
having the class as a star property or end property, those are the most important ones for us right now, actually, to start and end. I live in every instance of this class. Um, so we're looping through everything, everything here, each of these intervals, one, five, three, seven, and four, six. And right now we are considering, the first thing you do is to push the very first interval. So what the, the zeroth index interval into the result, and then you get this, right? One of five over here, because that's the first thing here, one of five over there. And when you step through this, the last added interval for that, and we know the last added interval is this, right? Um, I can add an expression for that by saying last added interval dot uh, format interval, in which case actually last added. Um, so that's the thing, the last added. So the current start, okay, so watch everything populate. Three, now we're, because we're evaluating this now. And the current end would be what? Seven. Uh-huh, see that? Okay, seven. What's the previous end going to be? Previous end is going to be five. And put this into pudding right here. It's going to be five. So is the previous end bigger? Five. Is five bigger than three? Current start. Most definitely. Um, and what does that mean? things we have not I like that this version of the code is not commented. I have a comment solution. But I can say with certainty Here, here we don't have. Okay, so when we have an overlap, what happens? We store, we update the index of the very last thing to the end, to the whatever biggest value it is in the current end and the previous end, in which case it's seven. So five is supposed to change to seven. So these two have become merged. Again. Now, now we're considering um, now we're considering we've merged these two now we're considering uh, this guy here and so what's the property of this guy current start should be 4 current end should be 6 previous end should be Seven. One. Overlap. Now, do we have an overlap? Previous end is seven. Bigger than four. So yes, we do have an overlap. Bring it in. Set to four. Um, but in this case, our previous is seven. Current is six, so this is completely swallowed up in this. So therefore, nothing really changes. Um, and just like that, we have reached the end of the loop because just evaluate it. Um, and return the result. Perfect. All right. That's that about that. We've stepped through the code. Uh, fairly straightforward. Fairly. Elegant solution. Time complexity is O of n, this complexity is O of 1. We only loop through the loop once. We don't store anything. Depending on the size, how the input grows. Okay, that's it. Three minutes. See you tomorrow.